I wish we can get out. You know, I see a guy sitting next to me, you know, I see his kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> so it must be pretty warm outside. <laughs> We're in the shorts yes. now, baby. There you go. On my way here, I've seen a lot of cars at the gym. So everybody's probably in the gym trying to get those pounds off, trying to get, get that stomach down and get toned up for the weather. Chris, have you been working out? Actually, I walked about seven miles yesterday. Did you? Yes, I did. Me, me and my wife, I took, I said, let's go. Get up. Where'd you go? We walked all through the neighborhood, through Crooked Creek, all the way out of Crooked Creek, all around by the schools, all through the neighborhood, all the way back home. I did about 10,000 steps yesterday. Nice. Oh, yeah. Well, you, know? you want to know what I've been doing? I've been doing the squat challenge. The squat challenge. Yeah. Okay. I just started like two days ago. Yeah. See, if I squat, I might fall down. I can't get up. <laughs> I'll be doing a sit down challenge. <laughs> oh, you don't want to hurt your knees. No, no, you definitely don't. You don't want to do that. Speaking of knees, we have a special guest in here, and his knees are a little rusty. But it's a good thing, okay? <laughs> it's a good thing. You know, hard work pays off. We have Cornerstone painting in the house, okay? You go to www.cornerstone pd.com. Okay. And we have the CEO owner, Mr. Mike. Buyers, how are you, Mike? I'm well. Thanks for having me in today. Hey, man, you know what? We need to tell the story about how we met. How did we meet? You remember? Did we meet at Others First? Oh man, that's an awesome place to meet people, isn't it? Others First. Others First Networking. It's a networking group out of Bishops. And I tell you what, when I met this guy, first thing I said, "You're not from here, are you?" And what'd you say? I'm from Chicago, man. What's up? That's why I'm from Chicago. So what's up? So both of you from Chicago. 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 It takes one to know one, right? <laughs> no, but with his mannerisms and the way that he was talking, uh, I just said, man, this, this guy, he pretty much knows what he's doing. And I asked him a question. Why don't you move to him? Grandkids. Life has to be different in a different spot, right? It sure does. <laughs> hey, man, we want to welcome you to the Indy Talk of the Town. Well, man. thank you. You know, uh, when we started the show, I had a dream of uh, getting everyone in our networking group, which are great professionals. We just had Christian McCrow on from the Corner Cook. Um, but now you're here to talk about uh, your business, and we wanted to feature you during the second hour. And uh, tell us kind of like, you know, who's Cornerstone Painting, and matter of fact, who are you? Who's Mike Byers? Wow, that's an interesting question. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just a regular guy who loves doing what he does for a living and I uh, love helping people. Um, love being able to come up with uh, unique solutions to problems that people present to me. Um, you know, I can tell a story perhaps a little bit later about drywall issues that people come up with that, you know, sometimes I gotta think on my feet about how am I gonna fix something. I have some stories. You do. Yeah. I have some issues. <laughs> drywall or otherwise. Um, drywall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know, that, that's a good thing. That might be a, a customer for you there, Mike. There you but, go. Hey, but Mike, how did uh, how'd you get into painting, man? People just don't want to become a painter. Were you messy as a kid? You just wanted to just play around with stuff? Or, or what, what happened, man? What, what made you a painter? Little known fact is uh, I went to school and got a marketing degree and back in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, got out of school and decided I was going to get into sales. Mm -hmm. And I did that for 13 years. And I sold everything from cash registers and envelopes and just goofy stuff. And it just didn't seem to fit me. Mm -hmm. See, I and like you. We have a lot in common. We do. There you go. Yes. Well, the last thing that I was doing was selling men's clothing in their offices. And I loved it. It was great. Um, that was the dream job for me. But, you know, I had a really hard time standing in front of a guy, showing him a piece of fabric and saying, you know, there's a $1,000 fabric. I just had a hard time with that, you know? Thousand dollar fabric. Well, the, the suit was going to be a thousand dollars, not just the fabric, know. you know. I know. <laughs> but they anyway. Be closing on million dollar deals, huh? You know what? It was hard for me because I had a hard time justifying that kind of income, you know, that kind of expense for, for clothing. But what I forgot about was the guy sitting across from me was probably making a quarter million dollars a year mm -hmm. and probably could have bought three or four of them without batting an eye. Mm -hmm. right. But I just had a hard time with that and I just eventually washed out of sales. And uh, so I got into 
painting just kind of by accident. A friend of mine up in Chicago had his own business, and his business was just basically doing apartments and condos and things like that. It was just get in, get out, boom. And it was just mm -hmm. that's how I got my first taste of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was with him for about two years, and I discovered that I liked it. I started to get good at it. Mm -hmm. I was learning to make a lot of mistakes, but I was learning, you know. And uh, from there, I went to work for another <laughs> yeah. up in Chicago who was well, the king of yeah. His business was all high-end stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, carnival type homes all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, he's where I really learned how to pay attention to detail and to be really meticulous. Uh, it absolutely works. And I would say, uh, out of all the people I've worked for over the years, he was the guy that I would probably model my business for. You know, I've actually tried to contact him. I've tried to track him down. I don't know where he's at anymore. But really? if I could track him down, I would absolutely Did tell him. Did you try Facebook? Thank you. you know everybody's on Facebook. I have tried Facebook. <laughs> well, if you're trying to find him, he's probably with him. So obviously, there Aww. must be something that you picked up. <laughs> Peter Patrick. Yeah, hey, man, no, that, that's a good thing. So, you know, you, you try the sales thing, you try the other thing, now you got to pay, now you got to get at it. But how did you start your business, man? You know, that's, that's, that's a big leap of faith. Wow, stories abound here, don't they? Yeah. Um, I, while I was working for other people, I was in the process of going through a divorce. And I'd been married for eight years. I had a little boy. Uh, he's not a little boy anymore. Um, and I was just trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And so I didn't intend on sticking with the painting gig. But I, like I said, I got good at it and discovered that I had people come in and ask me to do side work for them. And so that was kind of starting to pick up. But I was definitely getting the business for myself because I'm like, you know what, I have a hard enough time balance my checkbook every month my personal stuff. So <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to run a business, you know. <laughs> but it, it worked out, and after about 10 years of working for other people, a friend of mine came to me and said, dude, why don't you start going into business for yourself? What are you doing knocking yourself out working for other people? And I'm like, you know what? You're right. Let's go. Yeah. And so I did. And that was 2005, so it'll be 10 years now in, in uh, July. Congratulations. Congratulations.
Don't ask for nothing on it because you know what comes on it. If you get a polish, it comes with onions. Don't ask for no ketchup. You get punched in the face. It's like, what the hell? Ain't no ketchup in it. Oh, yeah. No. Chicago does not have that. Okay, like, they want you to taste all the flavor. That's right. Like, oh, and, okay. and it, oh, man, you talking about polish? Oh, oh, Chicago, dog. Man. Oh, and pork chop sandwich? Oh, oh come on now. You want, you want, you want to eat good? Mm. Oh, my. <laughs> I mean, and if you get a Chicago dog, Chicago dog comes with everything on it. Ain't no ketchup, but you got mustard, yep. and you got onions, yep. and you got hot peppers, you got you got relish, and you got uh, onion. onion, and you got tomatoes, cucumbers. No, 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 no cucumber powder. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cucumber powder. And on the and on the poppy seed bun, so you will guarantee yes, to fail a drug test because you'll test positive for opium. <laughs> yeah. You got a big <laughs> smile on your face. <laughs> you smashed that. Your arm. Where are these restaurants? Are they downtown? They're in the hood. They're in the hood. No, no, no. They're in the hood. Every part of Chicago has a hood. And that's where the that's where the best burger places or hot dog places or the homeless places are. And when I say the hood, it's not like oh, the hood. No, it's in the hood. So every you know, when you cross the border, the national changes. No, no, you just have to pass some money. It depends on which hood you're going to. You just said you're buying something. You know, so, like, if you live on Western, there's 230 nationalities in this one street. It's, it's 30 miles long. You know, from Skokie all the way down to Chicago Heights. So you're going to pass every nationality. So what happens is just that you're going to eat goods wherever you go. Well, that's right. Well, I mean, yeah. You know. <laughs> we don't talk ethnicity down here. No, no, no. no. no see, no, so see cool. now, if you want some soul food, South Side is soul food. You want some good Mexican food? You got, you know, Little Billy's down there, and you got all the Mexican restaurants. You want Little Italy? You got Little Italy right over there by UIC. You want Chinese food? There's Chinatown. Yeah. I mean, you want, you know, uh, Polish food? Go out towards uh, uh, Midway, that whole area, and plus on the north side, uh, off of Armitage, what's that? Armitage, uh, Armitage, uh, but just going to go west towards there, all that's Polish. So I mean, you got Russian, and you got Indian, you got African. I mean, you got, you got everything. You got Korean, yeah. Puerto Rican, all that. Oh, oh yeah. Say, don't you try to eat the same type of food. I mean, see, all my clients were everywhere, so everywhere I go, they teach. They just speak. Hey, Chris, what's going on, man? I mean, we can you know? tell you have been on the street. Man, <laughs> ten thousand steps are gonna go somewhere. Huh? Hey, that's a, you know I'm working on. I'm down to two thirty-two. For you. I'm trying to get down. I mean, I don't know how much you weigh, man. If I got that, I'd blow away or something. What, 190? About 175. Oh, man, that was it. When sophomore in high school, I was a football player, man. Fortunately, the kind of work that I yeah. do just keeps me. Keeps you going. Keeps me pretty active. Oh, man. Going up there. Bob, you, you, you remember yep. your days? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've had four months of inactivity, so i got to get rid of them. Yeah. Well, I'm See, I want to talk some Chicago food here and stuff during one of your segments. Oh, man, we're going to be hungry, man. Yeah. I know, I'm yeah. starving right Chicago now. I'm going to have to do that. Why don't you call Jordan Adams and uh, tell him to deliver something? I got a piece of that in there right now. Call Jordan Adams and have him deliver. Nah, I don't tell him we'll talk, we'll talk about him on the radio. <laughs> yeah, well, that one's down here, didn't it? Yeah, yeah they do that. Yeah. Yeah. What's the only one? Like not too long ago. No kidding. It's a, it's a oh, I believe it. You, you know where, you know where uh, uh, I have a slice of it right here. Yeah. Okay. It's like Craig around. Is that like Craig? Craig Road down that way? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's a Marathon gas station just a little further down on the left hand side. Oh, yeah. Right there. yeah, it's it's fairly new. Oh yeah. You get some jerk downs on your way home. Oh yeah. So anyway, man, that's that's one of the reasons why we're here now. That's the reason why I'm down here now. Yep. That's a blessing, man. Yes, it is. 
Got me in Chicago this week. I got to install some cameras up there uh, for this church. Okay. Over in Inglewood, um, 69th and Stewart. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I get called up there. I used to go to Chicago two, three times a week. Yeah. But I got 900 clients in Chicago. Okay. I mean, it's just like, the service for me. You get your phone always playing. Yeah. But that's years of working around here. I got almost 450 clients in the last five years since I've been here. And my master, what I, what I love to do is go out and meet, meet somebody, and I have a personal manager. Tell me about it. You know, who are you or whatever. And if you think about it, you get 100 clients a year, is that a bad deal? Oh, no. That's not at all. That, that's something that, and this medium right here, man, oh, it's just going to catapult everybody. All right, you doing a poster? Tracy, can you come take a picture? Special calls, Dimera. Hey, Dimera. I'm not your co-host, Chris. Okay. You're not co-host. Hi, Chris. Said special. I said special. Okay. No, she has a little bus outside. <laughs> Short bus. No, she, no. Well, she asked for it. Yes, she did. And here Short we are. Uh, we were just Short driving bus. on the mic with Bobby on uh, Wheels of Steel. And we got our special host, uh, Mike Myers, in the house with us. Mike, how you feeling, man? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. Uh, hey, man, you know, during that break, we were you know, talking that, you know, we're both from Chicago. And, you know, the greatest thing I love about Chicago is, I guess, the food. Wouldn't you agree? That's uh, top of the line, my friend. So, my, you know, Mike, uh, what's a good place, you know, we're here in Indianapolis. Uh, you know, we want to remind ourselves of Chicago. Is there any place locally that uh, you were, learned about recently that we might be able to go to to get some... Good old Chicago food. Oh, I just learned from you just a few minutes ago that Giordano's is now in Indianapolis. I did not know that. Well, you know what? It's on 82nd Street. And for those of you who are listening to Indy Talk of the Town, we just want you to know one thing very important is that Giordano's, uh, we want to come to your location. And we also love to be able to do a radio broadcast. And maybe we can share some of the delight of that great deep dish Chicago pizza 
You line mm. that up, Chris. I'll be there, my Man, friend. Man, I tell you that. Now, Dimeria, you don't know too much about Chicago. I don't. I don't even know about it here in Darnold. My friend they live here now, so get some pizza. Okay, well, I think they don't deliver. I think 